Hello friend, welcome to the last episode of Zuzu Koran Summoner Progression Guide. Last time we took down the Empress of Light in the day and obtained the Terra Prisma. It was a short episode that explained all her patterns and what gear I recommend, so be sure to check that out if you haven't. I'm Zuzu Korn and I aim to entertain you, encourage you and offer you a place to call home. So subscribe now and join the Zuzu Korn family. Today, let's finally take down the Moon Lord. However, I want to start off by getting the spooky armor set from the Pumpkin Moon. Spooky armor is just basically a better tiki set and you need about 750 spooky wood to craft it. With the Terra Prisma, the invasion isn't too difficult. You will shred through most of it. Just look how fast they're killing the morning woods. Most of the spooky wood comes from that, so focus those down. Without the Terra Prisma, just use the Deadly Sphere Staff or the Xeno Staff. The Tempest Staff from Duke Fishron is okay as well if you have it. Not much to say about this. It would be nice if we could get a Raven Staff as well from the Pumpkins. The bad thing about the Terra Prisma is that it's so strong that you end up progressing the event, even when you don't want to. So eventually you reach the final wave and can barely farm morning woods, especially with all the pumpkins flying around. Well, that's over, let's loot and sort it out. So we've got quite a lot of things from this. We managed to get the raven stuff, which is alright. We've got just enough spooky wood as well, so let's make the armor set. With our spooky armor, we can now take down the lunatic cultist and start the end game. I'll be using the Xeno Star for this. Like I mentioned, I won't be showing the Terra Prisma for core progression. A UFO mount would help for this fight, but the soaring insignia is fine as well. For the lunatic cultist, just go in circles and you'll be fine. It's actually a lot simpler than you think. The Xeno Staff will make quick work of him. The only thing you should take note of is the part where you have to whip the right one. Just look for the one that's a darker colour. If you're unfortunate, your summon might hit the wrong one, which just leads to chaos, so just be mindful of that. Overall, a pretty straightforward fight. Nice, there we go, the Celestial Pillars have been summoned. Remember to loot the Ancient Manipulator too. With the 4 pillars spawn, we are obviously going for the Stardust Pillar one, which is summoner based. You can use the Xeno Staff, the Raven Staff or the Terra Prisma. All you have to do is defeat 150 enemies and take down the pillar. Due to our low defense as a summoner, don't be surprised if you die a couple of times. As long as you don't log out of the game, the progress you make won't be reset. The Xeno Staff is great for taking down the pillar itself. Its single target damage is great. So claim your Stardust Fragment and let's hurry back. We are at the last stretch already. In Expert Mode, you usually have enough Fragments to craft both weapons. So head over to the Ancient Manipulator and craft the Stardust Dragon Staff. If you can, make the Stardust Cell Staff as well. The Stardust Dragon is the more important one that you should make because it's great for single targets, while the Stardust Cell is amazing for groups of enemies instead. In essence, the Stardust Cells are basically just the Xeno Staff upgrade. They teleport around and also deal damage over time, so it's a pretty solid weapon. The Stardust Dragon on the other hand is a monster for slow moving enemies like Golem. Each summon gives it one more body segment, and it basically hurts everything it touches. Its damage output is just crazy, but because it's just one dragon, it's not too effective against group of enemies. Its AI makes it miss flying enemies quite a bit too. What I like to do for the pillar fight is to have a balance of both, perhaps 3-4 Stardust Cells and about 3-4 Dragon Summons. This usually works out pretty well because of the balance of crowd control and damage, but it's really up to you, whatever you like. Summoners at this point are truly a game of preference. Of course, there are some things that are objectively better, but if you like something, just use it, it will work out somehow. If you've got the Terra Prisma, well, you can just stand still and still destroy everything. It's pretty nuts. I mean, just look at the Terra Prisma shred the pillar. Absolutely insane. So the solar pillar is a tough one. The enemies are tough and they hit really hard. Being a squishy summoner, just be prepared to die more than you'd like. You also can't fly too high above ground, or the crawlipedes will come for you. This is a really tough pillar. So as you can see, the Stardust Dragon really does great damage as well for non-moving enemies. 
Now, this is the Nebula Pillar, which is the last pillar. The moment we defeat it, the Moon Lord will come in one minute. So don't take it down until you're ready. I'll show you how to fight him later. I've got my potions prepared, so let's just go ahead with this. This pillar isn't too difficult, but be careful of the ones that shoot lasers at you. Those hurt a lot. Anyway, with that done, we're ready for the Moon Lord. If you want, you can make some of these. Potions that heal 200 health. They might be useful, but you will need one of each fragment for a bundle of four. Now, for the Moon Lord as a summoner, I recommend using Hollowed Armor. You can argue against it, but I think it works best. I'll be using the Stardust Dragon, but with one Stardust Cell just for good measure. Having a dragon that's too long won't really help anyway. Our accessories are the same as the Empress of Light fight, so check that video out. The main problem with summoners is that we can't keep our distance, or else our summons won't really deal enough damage. Every other class can stay far away and dish out consistent DPS. However, because we have to rely on AI, we can't do that. So the hollowed armor will protect us from attacks that we can't avoid. The moment the screen flashes white, dash and start moving. Try to stay at an angle from the Moon Lord and not directly in front of it. You can avoid most of his attacks, but the fast moving bullets that go pew pew are pretty hard to avoid. So that's where the hollowed armor comes in. Your dragon likes to target the middle eye, which is great. That's the one with the least amount of uptime. If you want to, you can just whip the hand and the dragon will change target. Same as usual, keep an eye out for the laser. With the fish run wings, we can simply fly over it without much issue. Just keep a respectable amount of distance and always watch the middle eye. There are way too many things that are going on, so we're almost always bound to get hit. Just make sure you heal whenever you can as well. Don't wait till you're at critical levels of health. It might not seem like you're doing a lot of damage, but the dragon is actually doing great. It's constantly trying to chase, meaning that its body is almost always touching the eye, and you're doing good damage to it. If possible, try to time it such that you release all three eyes at around the same time. It's not going to be easy, since you can't really control what summons do, but just do your best and do what you can. Alright, we've got one eye out. Let's see if we can get them all out. Nice, the middle one is out now, just the left hand is left. With the eyes out, things get worse. The eye itself isn't too threatening, but the main issue is their lasers. Each eye will shoot their own lasers, and that's crazy hard to avoid. If you're far ahead, you can avoid them, but your dragon can't attack. There's a very fine balance you have to look for. There's bound to be some lasers that you can't avoid, so the hollowed armor will protect you well in those times. That's why I really recommend it. With the last eye out, the core is now open, and our dragon is doing its job. When you find the right distance, the dragon will continuously chase the core while you stay ahead. Once you have this, just keep flying non-stop. We are honestly doing really nice damage, even though it doesn't seem that way. We are well ahead of the eyes, so it's just a matter of time now. And there we go, the Moon Lord defeated as a summoner. With that, our summoner journey is complete. The journey was tough, but it definitely was a fun one. Of course, it's not really over yet. I duplicated the summoning totem for the Moon Lord just to show you how the fight would be with the Terra Prisma. Not sure if you think that's cheating, since we did beat the entire game already anyway. So the loadout is the same, but the technique is a little different. The Terra Prisma has better AI, but I don't know if it deals better single target damage. So the start is the same, just dash and stay ahead, trying to dodge the fast moving beams. If you notice, the damage output seems to be a little lower than the Stardust Dragon. Maybe it's just me. Another thing is, when both eyes are open, the Terra Prisma still prioritizes the right hand and not the forehead one. As a result, it's going to be much harder to release all three eyes at the same time. Dodging the laser is the same, so just fly over it. Well, unfortunately, we're going to get one eye out already, which is not ideal. With one eye out, I recommend doing this instead. Fly up to dodge the laser, but don't go over him. This way, we still stay on the Moon Lord's right side, which allows the Terra Prisma to target the middle eye. It might feel a little weird to not go over him, but this ensures that the middle eye gets damaged. It might be just me, but I really feel like the Stardust Dragon does better damage for the Moon Lord. 
Well, with that eye out, we can finally go over to take out the other eye. But it's crazy dangerous. Oh, we almost died there. I'm going to dash even further forward, just to buy time for our potion cooldown. Flying too far ahead will make the moon not teleport to you, but I think it's fine. Okay, that wasn't fine. We would have died if I didn't have the holy protection. So yeah, don't go too far ahead. Our potion cooldown is almost up though. Wow, I'm getting really lucky with these dodges. Aha, another wonderful save by the Hollowed Armor. Well, we're healed up, so we're fine now. Same with the dragon, we are now at this stable state. So just fly along the world and let the Terraprisma do its thing. The lasers aren't reaching us anymore, so it's all cool now. I think I still prefer the Stardust Dragon for the Moon Lord. It might be simply how I'm doing the fight, but hey, if it's not broken, don't fix it. And well, with that, we have beaten the Moon Lord with the Terra Prisma. Our journey has truly come to an end now. Of course, I didn't manage to get a single fishing accessory at all, so no cell phone for us. But with that, our summoner progression guide comes to an end. It has been a wonderful journey, and I hope your own summoner journey will be equally as amazing. I hope this guide has helped you out, or even entertained you. Hope to see you again soon. This has been Zuzucorn Games. Have a nice day, and have a great week ahead. Bye bye!